Hi guys. This lesson is going to talk to you about um, how to add and subtract rational expressions. So, I know normally in math adding and subtracting is easier. That's not the case in fraction land. <laughs> Remember when we add and subtract fractions, we have to have common denominators. And we had a previous lesson where I had you guys work with um, how to build the common denominator because that's really the most challenging part of these questions. Now, sometimes you'll have something like number one where it already has a common denominator. So you'll notice that both of these fractions have um, the x plus 3. So you don't have to do any work to build it up. What I'd like you to do, though, is on your answer, go ahead and write a fraction that has the common denominator of x plus 3. You don't have to do any work with that. And then you're just supposed to add the numerators together, because now that they have the common denominators, your numerator just says this. Now, I think you know enough about Algebra 2 at this point to realize there's no way that this is the end of the question. It's got to have another step to it, and you're right. Because the last step, uh, well, second to last step in adding and subtracting rationals is once you combine the fractions, now you have to investigate the new numerator. Is there any factoring that you can do? And the answer is yes. We can factor out a common term here. You can take out a 4 right here. So this becomes a 4 times the x plus 3. Uh-oh, this is why this was a trick question. And then the very last step is, once you do any factoring, is there now some canceling? And the answer is yes. So right here, the x plus 3s will cancel. And we just get an answer of 4. Oh my goodness. You will not believe how many kids get that question wrong. Because it starts off with common denominators. You're thinking, oh, how easy. Um, and then turns out not so easy. So let's move along. We learned our lesson. Make sure you look for factoring and canceling at the end. Now in this question, we do not have common denominators. This fraction has an x minus 5, and this fraction has an x plus 2, and they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So when I go to write my answer, it's going to have a common denominator of both of those things. It's going to need an x minus 5, and it's going to need an x plus 2. So what we have to do now is use our knowledge of getting common denominators and build up to that common denominator. So this fraction is going to need his missing x plus 2. But we know this goes to both the numerator and the denominator. The second fraction we see is missing the x minus 5. And again, we know that that would have to be multiplied to both the numerator and the denominator. Sometimes, you know, it feels like, oh, I'll just write it up top because it's less writing. And I'm all for lazy things, but that's really mathematically wrong. Um, so don't do that this time. So we already have the denominator set up. We already knew it was x minus 5 and x plus 2. But the numerator just became a lot messier than it usually was. But that's what happens when you get common denominators. So right here in this numerator, and I'm going to not distribute it yet on this first one. I'm going to write it as 2x times the x plus 2. And then careful here, you have a subtract 4. Don't lose that subtract sign. And then it's being multiplied by that x minus 5. All right, now I'm going to go clean this up. I'm going to distribute. So the 2 gets, 2x gets distributed, and watch here, this is a negative 4 getting distributed. So I'm using an arrow instead of an equal sign because I don't want you to look back at this and think they were equations because we're going to learn equations in the next lesson. All right, so this numerator become, a, let's see, a 2x squared, a plus 4x. Watch your negative here. we got a minus 4x, so that's interesting and then a plus 20 because of the negative negative. Now, of course, I never like to, to distribute the denominator because that feels like more work and it's unnecessary. We'd have to come back and factor it later, so don't bother. All right, we have some simplifying here. I'm sure you see it, but the 4x and the 4x will end up canceling each other out. Um, and we do end up with a 2x squared plus 20 over x minus 5 times x plus 2. Now, if you forgot the very important trick factoring step at the end, you're actually going to luck out. This one doesn't factor and reduce anymore. Well, I shouldn't say it doesn't factor. It doesn't reduce anymore. But that numerator does technically factor. You can take a 2 out of it. But when you take a 2 out of it, you still have 2 times x squared plus 10. And you'll notice none of those factors are going to end up canceling. So this was a case where you're just a lucky ducky if you forgot about that last factoring step at the end. So, and that's usually the case, I'll be honest. I don't try to give you a lot of trick questions this year, so just watch out for that on the SAT for sure. 
Um, but for algebra two, I'm going to try not to mess with your brain too much. All right, so we learned in our building the common denominators lesson that sometimes a denominator that is a polynomial actually has multiple parts to it once we look at the factorization. So like for instance right here, this x squared minus 9, that's factorable. This is really an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. And it's important that we look for the factorization parts because that gives us less work when it comes to building the common denominator. When I look at my problem now, this fraction has an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. This fraction has a common x minus 3. So what that tells me is I'm going to need an x plus 3 and an x minus 3, and that's it for my common denominator. This is why this is good news, all right? The first fraction's good. It doesn't have to have anything added to it. There's no additional factors it needs. The second fraction is the problem. So the second fraction is going to need the x plus 3 multiplied to both the numerator and the denominator. So pretty good news. Our numerator is not horrible. Just a little bit of distribution and simplifying. So I'm going to start with the 6x plus 1. That hasn't changed at all because we didn't have to multiply by anything in the first fraction. And then here we've got a plus 4 that's being distributed to the x plus 3. All right, now I am going to take the time to distribute. All right, my work's coming down here now. So we've got, let's see, a 6x plus 1 and then a plus 4x plus 12. Obviously there's some simplifying and then lazy teacher never wants to you know foil out or distribute that denominator because that feels like a lot of work that I'd have to undo in a minute. We are going to simplify that numerator we said. Um, we're going to combine the x's and the constants and that becomes, let's see, oh that's nice, 10x plus 13. I say that's nice because that's not factorable which means we're done. There's obviously no cancellation here because we don't have a 10x plus 13 anywhere else in the problem. And there we go. So the child, the question, uh, the problem that kids run into on that question is they look at that question and they think the common denominator is more than it is. Well, so the least common denominator is not what they're using. They're just using a common denominator and it creates this really horrible polynomial up top and on bottom. And then they end up factoring and canceling at the end. So they give themselves like triple the amount of work than the kid who looks for the least common denominator. So keep that in mind. All right, I think these denominators are secretly uh, pieces. I think they're factorable. So let's take a look at those. This denominator, I'm going to factor, let's see, how about an x minus 4 times an x plus 1? Those arches would add up to negative 3, yeah. This denominator is, let's see, an x minus 2 times an x plus 1. So when I think about my common denominator, okay, we're going to go through a list of what we need. So, so far I need an x minus 4, an x plus 1. And then if I look at the other denominator, it calls for an x minus 2. And then remember, this is a common piece. I don't need two x plus 1s. It's just in common with both denominators. So what I'm looking at there, that's what I need as my common denominator. So let's talk about what we're missing. This fraction, all it's missing is the x minus 2. So we would multiply both numerator and denominator by the x minus 2. And then this fraction is missing the x minus 4. So we would multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the x minus 4. Now, I don't have to do any work in the denominator. We already have that set up. That's why I like doing it that way. Got a little bit of work here in the numerator, though. Some distribution, don't we? All right. I'm going to rewrite it without the distribution for now. Um, so I'm going to leave the 5 being multiplied by the x minus 2. And then careful here, this is a negative sign or a subtraction sign. So a minus 3 who's going to get distributed to the x minus 4. This is the step where a lot of kids start crossing stuff off. That would be you undoing all the work we just did. Like I got common denominators and then you throw them away. Like that's silly, don't do that. All right, so now we're going to clean this up by distributing. All righty, next line of work, Opruzo. Here we go. This is now a 5x minus 10. Some of you can do that distribution step in your head without writing it out. These are my notes. I don't feel like I should be skipping steps on my notes, but as you practice, you know, you run the risk of making a mistake, so be careful. But it is an option if you're a strong distributor. All right, so we have a negative 3x and then a plus 12. 
All right, we'll clean that up in a minute. The denominator, I just keep in factored form. x minus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. If you played with the order of those terms, you moved them around, it's fine. And then a little simplifying, and I hope we're done. <laughs> oh, I don't think we're done. All right, this is a 2x, and that's a plus 2 over that common denominator. And if I stopped here, I'm going to get it wrong. And if we were in class, you guys would all be shouting at me, going, you need to factor. You're right, I need to factor. Okay, I also need another line of work. Look at this numerator, y'all. This guy right here. This factors. You can take a 2 out. So why is that important? Well, if you take a 2 out of that, you have 2 times x plus 1. And look at that denominator. Look who else shows up in your denominator. The x plus 1. <laughs> So we're going to have some cancellation here. Of course we are. All right. So the x plus 1 cancels with this x plus 1. I'm so glad you guys would have shouted factor to me. And your numerator is a 2, only a 2. And your denominator is now the x minus 4 times the x minus 2. That, my friends, is your final answer. That was a hoot, wasn't it? That was um, probably the hardest style of question I'm going to give you. So it required you to factor at the beginning build up a common denominator, really strive for the least common denominator, you had some distribution, you had some last minute factoring in the numerator, which resulted in some last minute cancellation. What a good time. All right, good luck everybody.